I think it completely goes without saying that a discovery is one of the most important parts of any sales process, if not the most important part. Now, so many salespeople use the discovery as a means to an end, which is, oh, I've got to ask these five or six questions to get them out of the way so I can show some value or, or demonstrate my product. And often those five or six questions are the same to every single prospect. I want to talk about something called a gap analysis, which is really going to help us rationalize and understand what we need to do when running an effective discovery. Our objective with a gap analysis is really simple. We want to try and learn as much as we can about the prospect's current state. And the objective of this is to then try and understand what the future state is that they're trying to achieve. So where the prospect is and where the prospect needs to be. This part in the middle is the gap analysis. This is where we discover the value. And this is why so much of buying takes place in the questioning itself. So this is where a lot of salespeople go wrong. They're very good at finding the facts. And the example here is, is a car. So they drive a Honda Accord, it's done 160,000 miles, it's 11 years old, etc., etc. These are the facts. Then what they do is they diagnose the problem. So they uncover that it breaks down and it has monthly maintenance, um, it's very little cargo space, and they can't take the family camping. What they don't do is talk about the impact of these problems. So here we have the wife complains a lot about the camping which causes flights, consistently late for work, left with one car. And then salespeople very, very rarely, only the very best ones start examining the root cause. So what's causing these problems? So it's made from cheap metal and isn't rust proof. It's a foreign car, so parts are very expensive and the previous owner didn't take care of it. So these are the root causes to the problems. Now the great salespeople also do this. And this is where we start turning these into emotions and understanding the emotions that are affecting these problems. So how did it make them feel? Frustrated, angry, left out, trapped. And now we start examining the future state. Where do they want to be? They want money so they can go on vacation. They want to take the family on camping trips. They want less contention with the wife. And they don't have to take the bus anymore. And then lastly, they bring the solution in. Now what a lot of salespeople do is they're very good at examining the facts. They're very good at uncovering some of the problems. They don't talk enough about the impact or the root causes. And we very, very rarely get into the emotions that the individual is suffering from when they have these problems and these root causes. What we often do is we start with facts and then we jump straight to solution. And as you can see, we're missing five really, really important steps out in that process. One of the most common questions I get asked is, well, how do you do all that on one call? Well, the answer is you don't, and you don't have to. There's an obsession in modern selling, particularly with SaaS, that everything needs to be achieved on one call. Now, it's very important that we stop looking at our sales process as different calls and demos. It's about the key information that we need to gather to understand the robustness of the opportunity. And that takes different times for different customers. So stop fixating about the call or the email. It's about making sure that during that process, we gather all of the information.